if you're an extrovert, it's pretty obvious why you would part with $246,000 when you drive the Gallardo Superleggera around. People go up and gape pull out their cell phones for impromptu photo sessions. Unfortunately, law enforcement also pays extra special attention, so the idea that you could do 200 mile an hour in this car is completely goofy. Superleggera in Italian means super light, which is a bit of a misnomer because the supercar weighs 3,500 pounds. It's actually lighter than the standard Gallardo to the tune of 126 pounds. The car also has another 11 horsepower, so as you can imagine, it's a bit quicker off the line than the standard Gallardo. The Gallardo Superleggera looks terrific, particularly in bright Midas yellow. It might be four years old, but the reaction of the people who we went past tended to indicate that they'd never seen one before, which actually might of course be the case in both rural and cosmopolitan Michigan. Round here, this is something from outer space. The V10 engine sounds pretty darn good in standard tune, but in super Leggera mode, it's absolutely amazing. It's one of those cars where you wind the windows down, head for the nearest tunnel, and give it plenty in the low gears just to hear the exhaust note reverb back. Launching the Superleggera is really simple. The car we had had the e-gear transmission, which is effectively Lamborghini's automated manual. All you do, put the car in gear, switch off the stability control, engage the sport mode, release any pressure on either pedal, and then stomp on the gas. The thing will depart like a cat on a lighted range. <laughs> On the track, the Superleggera is pretty good. Obviously, it's an all-wheel drive car, and that means that it doesn't slide massively. You're not going to get huge tail-out slides in this car. But there's enough torque diverted to the rear end that you can actually drive the car on the throttle and, and adjust the line pretty minutely. It's pretty fast. We were doing comparable lap times to a Z06 at Gingerman, which is our circuit of choice. The car's really fast in a straight line. It's got plenty of grip. The only thing that I don't like that much about it is that the steering's a little bit polluted because it's got the all-wheel drive system. You know, a two-wheel drive car has much more communication than this one does. The only problem we found with the Superleggera was that the brakes were terrible. They're stellar in terms of the stopping distance that you can get. We managed to achieve 70 to mark zero mile an hour in 150 feet, which is pretty darn good. And out on the track, they work reasonably well also. But if you're driving it on the road, you tend to kangaroo to a halt everywhere because the brake pedal has zero feel, and we just can't recall anything with brakes this sensitive. Another weak area on this car was fuel consumption, because we managed to get about 12 mpg. Then again, if you've got $246,000, gas prices aren't really an issue. Overall, Superleggera is a sensational car, but it's hugely expensive. The only saving grace is that in many ways it's a better car than a Murcielago LP640. It's as quick in a straight line, it's a lot less of a handful on the track, and it's a good $100,000 less than the Murcielago. I'm not sure Lamborghini would like us to tell people to go and trade in their Murcielagos for Gallardos, but it does make the case that, that Gallardo looks like quite a good bargain for Lambo fanciers. Mm -hmm.